just another tower through which the traffic flows now the days looks like it's been rebuilt I don't know what's behind those walls looks too well done to have been simply an old remnant of the wall but let's go see where I am now is the Borgia San Fidiano. At least that's what the boulevard is that goes through this archway. Now I'll now look at my map and see if I can figure it out. Fortunately, in my wanderings toward Pedi Palace, um, I came across Santo Spirito Church again, and this time it's open and you're able to take video as long as there's no flash. The guidebook describes this as a classic Brunelleschi interior. There is a beautiful sense of, um, well, beauty, <laughs> but of almost lightness, even though the uh, columns are quite massive. It would be interesting here, as if in the Duomo, Duomo, the distance between the pillars is greater here than it is up front to create the illusion of greater distance. This church is classic in the sense that it has the little chapels off to the side where people may euphemistically show reverence as opposed to worship um, various saints, etc that appeal to their needs. The uh, gray marble and the cream or white colored painted surfaces give a beautiful elegance. This shot of these arches at different distances gives a sense of the three-dimensional, which Brunelleschi was the master of, the perspective. But you get a sense of, I don't know how to characterize it, um, Needless to say, we're looking at a very beautiful, complex altar. Look at the elegance of the night career extensive carving of this chapel. I wish I were more of a artist or creative person so I could truly appreciate the beauty that I sense here. But these retreating arches uh, just speak to me of the ethereal and they appear light the whole scene seems gracefully light here's a good example of the sense of soaring that is created in this church Okay, now notice that the, uh, of course, the dome is dead center over the intersection between the transept and the nave. And of course, underneath it directly is this incredibly beautifully elegant um, altar. But then as I pan to my right, this large stubby area, if looked at from above, is the north transept. And I say, what's interesting here is how short and yet wide it is. Most are longer and narrow. Now what I'm going to focus on now is what I believe is Michelangelo's carved wood painted crucifix. And the interesting story here is he gave this to this church in thanks for the privilege of dissecting bodies, 
Apparently those of parishioners who died. Well, they are obviously dead. And here's the benefit of a telephoto video camera. Without my churchly garbs, I'm not allowed up there close enough as this camera can go. What's interesting, if it is Michelangelo's, is the tremendous sense of musculature, as opposed to the 13th century uh, medieval curious representations, for example, of the rib cage and the uh, stomach and lower chest area. Again, just to take a look at some of these chapel paintings, none of which are uh, described or noticed by the guidebooks suggesting that they're not of notable artists that we remember. Uh, but looking at this, you get a sense of the idealization of Christ even in the carrying of the cross. Everything looks rather genteel almost, and it certainly was anything but. I'm moving slowly across the front to get a sense of how things seem to change with the arches in the background. You would think that this artist would be noted because it's a seemingly masterful piece of work, just in its style and dimension and intricacy. I don't know if uh, Brunelleschi designed the entire church or not, but even the ceilings are elegantly done as opposed to the simple and somewhat classical wood. Again, notice the interplay of those two different directions of arches, the ones that go away from us in the line and those that are perpendicular to it on the aisle. This is as probably as close as I will get to the spectacular gardens. Which we will cross to get to Campo to get to Novo. Look at that one property that's built right out over the sidewalk. I guess it's appropriate, although not the right place, but this is a bronze dramatization relief of the Nazis either herding people into or out of the boxcars, presumably the people are Jewish, of course. Train in the front. So it's in this place, exactly right around here, that the Doge put all of the Jewish people, 12,000 of them at the time, on an unused, undesirable island. There are now less than 500 who apparently call this their home, although somewhat confusing statistically, there's only a couple of dozen that might actually live somewhere here. 
and what's been noted is the six stories, although I count seven uh, story skyscrapers, for lack of a better term. Here are several panels of reliefs relating, I'm sure, to Jews and the Holocaust. This one's probably obvious, a woman being shot. Someone else, probably a close relative, being held by a man to the right. This in some way I believe is symbolizing the slaughtering of the Jews into mass graves with the machine gun at the left. Obvious. This may be depicting the hard labor of Jew labor camps. In a brief exchange with some American couple last night, I made the comment it was good to see more Americans traveling and he responded, yes, now that we have a greater uh, faith in uh, humanity and I said, you are an optimist. I said the irony of being in Florence and looking at the history that I see here and this history on this wall, I just photographed this another example. I see no reason for optimism when you're talking about the human race. Man is a very dangerous animal.